welcome to our van tour. I'm Kelly and three years ago me and my husband Rich decided that we were going to convert a van. We had to learn everything from scratch including electrics, plumbing, cabinet making and we even built a fully working bathroom. After a year of using the van we thought it's about time we gave you a tour so let's start at the front. So this is our vehicle. Our van's not your usual base van. It's a 2003 Mercedes Vario. We fell in love with the charm of the vehicle. We went through this from top to bottom when we got it, even building the curved ceiling and cab storage that you see above here, respraying the dashboard, building this cool little cup holder, which is actually one of our latest additions and is probably the most useful thing to me when I'm driving. And for me, because I don't get coffee spilled on me. Absolutely. So I can hop out here, which is helpful. At the moment, we are in travel mode. So these seats have a magic trick, we're gonna show you in a minute. We're all facing in the same direction. So you can see that it seats three of us with belted seats. I'm in the driver's seat. Cal usually sits here. Lily, our daughter, usually sits here. Like most tiny homes, we've tried to make everything as much as possible, have like a dual purpose in our bus, because even though we've got all of this space and we have got I think 190 centimetres of headroom up here. I'm a short guy. We wanted to make sure that we made absolutely best use of all of it. All right, so these have a few different sort of configuration options. So first, the most simple is that you could fold them both up. So you've just got more standing room here. So if you've got people in here, which we often do, you've got more room to just parade around or have a little dance or whatever, I don't know. The other thing that happens is that they can turn around or you could completely take them out. So if you wanted to go and pick up an engine for your race car or anything practical in here in your bus, you could do it. And they're not the lightest things in the world. I will admit that. But if you take them out, which I've got handy now, essentially, and there you go. One. And two. Normally Kelly would help me with that, but she's behind yeah. the camera. So I can't do everything. <laughs> and then up they go into that seat position. We do usually fold this driver's seat forward a little bit to allow this one to recline. And voila, we now have our makings of our living room all set up. So we've got the two seats here and then we actually sit on the end here. We've got loads of sockets around our van because we just didn't want cables trailing everywhere. Like if we were sat here when we we're driving that way, we've got two 12 volt sockets here, USBs, and we've also got the two 30 volt as well for anything like our laptop chargers or like fast chargers or things like that. We very rarely use those, but we've got them all over the van just so we can. We've got another one down here for the same reason. You'll notice that we've got loads of windows in our van, so we didn't put these in, as you can probably tell. We bought the van because of the windows, because of the fantastic views that we can get. Another nice thing about having all these windows is that you can actually open a window. Or two. All right, so here we've got our table. So we've got a mount on the end here, and I've actually got a mount on the back of my box here. So for they're facing the other way. We can use the table there as well, but we have one for the Lagoon mount, which is really popular in lots of van builds. And the main reason being is because basically it's articulated and you can move it around. So we could use it over there on the sofa, which we often do at night, or we could use it here, either in this mode like this, because it's pretty sturdy, or we can actually undo ours, unfold the table, and when we've got a dining table, we also double this up and use it to prep food and things sometimes when we're cooking. It just gives you a little bit of extra workspace. The other thing that we added on this, because obviously the leafs are here, is these supports. So these just pull out there, pull out here, and then it just makes it a little bit more rigid. And then once you've locked these in place, the table is pretty sturdy. We basically wanted to use a smaller footprint as we could but then also have you know, a nice big table for all of the other things that we need to do in the van. So this is still in travel mode. We've moved the table, but usually we have all our coats and everything here. When we are stationary, we usually move them to the hooks at the front of the bus. 
So this isn't just a sofa, it also turns into a bed and it also has some very handy storage which I'll show you now. So we've got three different uh, drawers and a cupboard, well two drawers in the cupboard. So in here we just usually have like blankets, bits of electronics. This is where Rich keeps the majority of his clothes. <laughs> And Droney. <laughs> Droney today. Droney today is the one who is here. And this one's more like a flat cupboard. And this is where we keep Lily's toys. And you can also see, if I pull this out, the eye mask water heater. <laughs> the back of it. The sofa bed. This is actually a Japanese floor mattress. Um, which, dub, which we double up as the, the cushioning for our sofa. This is our guest bed. We sometimes use it. So obviously we need to move the table, which as we demonstrated earlier is quite simple. Easy peasy. So it's built on heavy duty drawer sliders. So it's different from your usual sliding bed. They actually lock in place here, so it won't go anywhere when you're sat on it or when it's in transit. So you push them down, and then we've got these handles here to pull them out. And then the bed drops into place. We decided we'd have a piece that was removable. Slides in like so. Legs flop out like that. And then it's a nice bed that we'll easily sleep with too. And it's solid, it's absolutely solid. We've slept on this together, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Mattress goes back on. And in here is actually a mattress topper in a double wide pillow that we normally put on top of here just to make it a little bit more comfortable. So this is our guest bed. So if you ever come and stay, this is probably where you would be. So let's, by the magic of editing, pop it all away in reverse. Three, two, one. <sighs> have it it's got storage it's a bed it's a sofa what more could you want and a climbing frame with our bus we also wanted loads of storage so first of all we're going to look at our overhead storage so we have these little shelves we've got one on each side and also these two lovely cupboards and this one is usually overflow of food um this cupboard is all our toiletries so I usually keep my makeup in here, any toiletries like shampoo, conditioner, anything like that. And it also has the eye mask controls as well. So when we want to turn on the hot water, we go in here to do it. And we also have a load of different big cameras in our van for when we're doing only vans. I'm joking. But um, basically, if we're not in the van, we always have them turned on as well, just so we can for security reasons. This little mirror here is where I put makeup on and we've got some little mushroom hooky things, knobs, knobbers, as well, where we keep usually hairbands, hats, um, and this comes apart and slides out. It's one of my favourite things in the bus, actually. And we have even more toiletries in it. Inception. <laughs> it's really, really useful, this, because yeah. not only does it hide all of our stuff, but because it slides out, it kind of has dual purposes so it yeah. creates a little bit more privacy when you're up in the other end but also it just makes it like infinitely more use useful doesn't it with yeah. your, like brushing your teeth doing your hair makeup or whatever this bit here is actually you can as an access hatch for the shower controls so if there's anything ever one we could get to it quickly so more storage this is more of the kitchen area storage these two baskets are usually like crisps bread fruit things like that and here is, oh, oh dear. Oh, it's moved in transit. It happens. It's like all our plates and cups and things like that. Usually we have that packed out with other stuff. There's usually more in there. That doesn't more. move. As we were driving here, we're like, oh, something's moving. But real life stuff moves. And the last one is via food and like medicines and things like that. And more importantly, it's our little command center. We can see what our current batteries are, so we're at 100%. Um, if it, and if our solar panels are charging anything and how much electricity we are using. It also gives us information about how much fresh water we have. So we've only got 27% at the moment. 
and how much wastewater is in our wastewater tanks, which is 1%. It also tells us how much LPG gas we have left, which is 53%. And Richard's favourite thing on it, because it means he doesn't have to get out of the bus and touch the pipe to turn it on, is that we've got a remote solenoid to empty our wastewater tank. So you literally just press here and it opens automatically while you're still inside the bus and will drain your wastewater tank for you. These switches here is so you can turn on and off the gas in the bus. So if you're, for example, if you're going on the channel tunnel, you cannot have your gas on and really shouldn't have your gas on if you're driving anyway. Again, this is for the fridge, so this is usually always on. Um, this is turning on and off our oven to make it work. And then this one is to turn it on and off our water. So when we are driving, we usually only have on the fridge. This is for our inverter. And this one here is our diesel heater. We decided that we wanted a bigger sink because I wanted to be able to wash clothes in it, wash my hair in it, um, and so on, and be able to you know do the washing up. And this is the drainer, but you can also pop it in these little bits here, which is quite handy. So if I don't know if you wanted to wash vegetable or drain it straight in, you could do that as well. This little drawer here has just got our cutlery and utensils in it. So our fridge is a 115i and it's 115 litres. Give you a little bit of food in here, but not a lot. I want these brownies. <laughs> um, we've got like two weeks of food in there before, haven't we? Yeah, easily. Easily, yeah. so it does fit a lot in. This, I think this is the, my favourite thing we've worked on because we built this cupboard together, but this is the larder. Where we keep like all our cereals and um, tinned food and things like that. And at the top is just some cleaning things. So our oven is a Fetford triplex. It's got three burners. Who doesn't want three burners? Um, and then inside it also has a grill, two shelves, and underneath the oven, we decided to do um, storage for all our pans. I'll show you now. So this is basically all of our kitchenware that we use. So we've got saucepans, drainers, chopping boards, and oven dishes. These are like um, pot rest things so you don't burn the countertops. Okay, talking of countertops or worktops or whatever it's called, we have cut ours to be bespoke. So we bought like a three meter length of it and then we're very brave and cut out this hole for the sink, hole for the triplex and then we shaped it so we had a walkway in. Underneath here we've got storage space. We usually keep things like water, heavy things down in here. In the top here we have something that people always find interesting actually. So it's actually our bin. The lid comes off and then down into the cabinet here we've got a bin that you can remove empty take out we just drop, just drop a bag in there and then underneath you can see that it sits in our cupboard and this is a full size cupboard so in here we've got like our it's not very tidy but in here we've got our hoover heater like a just in case it's really really cold in here but don't often use it unless it's winter and all our cleaning products live in this space and then we've got one of these little catches on here to stop it opening when we're moving along. On the end here, we've got another plug socket to use up on the top, and we've got light switches. When we come in the door and it's dark, we can put the light on here, and then I can switch it off up here, and then vice versa. This one, we've got it powering strip lights, and they go all the way down, it's a little bit a little bit like an aeroplane. <laughs> I was going to say, doing your aeroplane moves there. Um, and yeah, they go all the way down from the front to the back and they light the space up really nicely. Underneath the counters, we've got ones on a dimmer um, and these are brighter lights. Talking about the ceiling then. So this ceiling is actually made of plywood. So it's poplar plywood that we have ripped down into inch wide strips. You'll notice as well that it's curved. So we've got curves in all of the cabinets. It was a bit of an experiment and actually we took it all the way down into the cab. So the curves follow. So that isn't the factory headliner that you can see up there. That's something that we managed to build ourselves. We went for stick on tiles. We really like them. They're lightweight. They look pretty good as well, to be fair. Um, and they've touched wood, they've lasted pretty well. They've been on for well over a year now. It was dead easy to install as well. So yeah. always a bonus. 
So dotted around our van, we went a bit crazy on this. We have various speakers. So we've got a speaker under each of the cabinets at the back. Because the van didn't come with any entertainment system at all, like literally nothing, we've installed focal component speakers. So we've got the mids up here, the tweets are in the dash, and then we built this console here to hold our Bluetooth stereo. We have a reverse in camera here that doubles up as our rear view mirror. Up here, so I just, we also have a subwoofer, which we managed to make from the box that was here already. So this was already in place to hold the door mechanism. because we've got a nice swinging door that opens here and we wanted to make use of the space. So we clad it in plywood, sealed it and made it into a subwoofer box and some storage for stuff like our first aid kit, breathalyzer, because you need that for some countries when you're traveling, and a little floaty device for when you're on the beach or in an emergency. Other thing we've got here, so we've got two of these in the van actually. So this is a Sirocco 2 fan. We first saw these on a van build in Australia and we thought it's pretty hot in Australia. So we thought it would be good here. Now these draw so little power, I think 0.4 amps when they're on full blast and they have different speeds. Because they're a gimbal fan, you can move them around. So we can have it pointed at me if I'm driving on my own, which very rarely happens, at the passenger seats, or we can move it right way around. So it works in the hab area. And then, like I said, you've got different speeds. Yeah, when it's hot in the summer, leave the one on in the bedroom. It doubles up as a nice little white noise machine as well. And then it just locks in place. Stays happy as Larry up there. This is the bus door that came with it and we've just added this modification to it. Oh, and it's good for ventilation. I'm talking about ventilation. We went with the very popular Max fan. So you can use it two ways. One is for ventilation and the other is to draw fresh air into the van as well. But it does really help when you're like cooking it takes all the steam out and you're not getting like the damp in the van. It was very important for us to have a full working bathroom. We wanted some privacy so we decided with the window we were going to put some of this gorgeous privacy film up and it loves this lovely little rainbow pattern and behind this tamper door is our toilet and I'll pull it out now and show you how it works. Just lift this up, really simple, press these little two tabs down and then we put a handle on, you pull. First hole, we, goes into a pot that you can easily empty. And the second part is self-composting toilet. So we literally put a bag in there, get it litter, do your business, and then you can dispose of it. And then this side, we've got some storage where we keep all of our toilet rolls and things like that, and the bags for the bin. We decided to go with these heavy duty sliders that lock into place for obvious re reasons really. You don't want the toilet moving around while you're using it. And also when it's stored away when you're driving, you want it, it's quite heavy, so you want it staying inside the sealed box. For the shower, we decided to go with this stone stream head because you can just easily press this button in and out and it turns the shower on and off as you're using it without having to fiddle around with the dials. This removed, you can see that we have wet room flooring in here. So this is by a company called Outro. And then this is specifically made for wet rooms. Now, when I built the tray, I designed it so it is angled down towards our drain hole. So it tilts down towards the front of the bus and towards the drain. The walls in here, you can see, follow the curve feature of the ceiling. So what we chose to use here was a product called Biomax. It's antimicrobial as well. So basically any germs that are on here within 24 hours, it's killed 99% of them, which is dead clever. I don't know how good it is. The one thing I can attest to though, is it dries really quickly, like super quickly in here. It drains really nicely um, and it looks nice and fresh too. The door is from a company called Roll Door and it is dead clever. So this is like a squeegee door. That's it shut. And on this side, you can see that it's got a nice coloured 
kind of pattern to it. On the inside, it's smooth and waterproof. So it's waterproof both sides. And basically, gives you a bit of privacy without losing any of the space. Final thing to point out in here, obviously we've got a towel rack up here. We use this like all of the time, uh, either for our towels or to dry clothes and things like that. But it's been a really quite handy thing to install in here. So that's our wet room. Uh, we love it. We use it, I'd say 90% of the time, even when we're on campsites, because it's the shower's just much better than the showers you get in campsites. All right, this is our biggest drawer. So it's massive, it's an under sink drawer. At the moment it's quite empty actually, but we usually keep stuff like our towels, hot water bottles, all of that stuff in there. And it shuts up like so. This is something that I didn't think would work when we got it, but this basically, I mean, that doesn't look very good, does it? But what if we did this? Then it's impressive. Then it's impressive. So these sliders that we installed here, basically are for our wardrobe. Got a few clothes fall down in here. So we can hang up to about 20 things in this wardrobe at any one time. And it doubles up as storage space for a little stool that we need to hop into our bed because it's quite high and you'll see why in a minute. And in here we've got our 12 volt fuse boxes, 12 volt isolator, our solar isolator and our master off on switch. We can kill everything dead from inside the vehicle rather than having to go around in our garage, which is where all of the electrical magic is going to happen, which we'll show you in a minute. We also have some additional clothes storage for me and Lil. So this first drawer is where a load of my clothes go into our bed area. It is a little bit high, so we have a little stool to get on. We wanted our bedroom area to be like a bit um, of a different vibe to the rest of the bus so it would be like a separate room and we also wanted to have Lily's bedroom in our bedroom but also feel like a bit of a separate space. It's like she's got her own little pod and she's got a place to put her stickers, a little um, headboard and her little bunting and her lights and there's some more lights for charges here. She mostly keeps her books in this in here and I've got another fan, more lights and this cool little storage thing that lets have a window out the back so we thought we might want to look out the back windows and our bed we've got this headboard that we actually found on Facebook marketplace it was just a standard headboard and we cut it down to make two headboards for the bus and here as well I've got a little mirror and a little stuff for storage again more lights and charger and our curved ceiling which we jazzed up with some Dalmatian spots that are pink <laughs> <laughs> and of course our huge skylight which I adore. First of all you've got a blackout bind for when you want to make it dark for sleeps and a mosquito or bug screen to stop any bugs getting in and falling on your head if you want to open it. You can also open it different amounts it's not been opened for a bit or you can do it wider again if you want to oh the breeze it's nice actually isn't it look how blue the sky is today so the bed itself actually sits on ikea scorver beam so we've got three beams here that hold up our double bed and then the bunk that sits above it we used another two to hold that up too and then we've got pine bed struts underneath. And we've got a light switch here right next to the bed that turn on our fairy lights. So my little fairy lights here with my little leaves and Lily's little cat fairy lights over there as well. It's really nice in here at night yeah. because it just gives a nice subtle kind of ambience light really. Our bus, the, one of the biggest selling points of it is it's so bright inside like it's always filled with light which is fabulous in the daytime but it's not so great if you wanted to go to sleep. But thankfully, we've got that covered. Me and my mum made these blinds for in each of the windows so that it will black out as much as sleep. And they're either with magnets or suction cups. These blinds, believe it or not, were actual curtains that we then cut down and re-hemmed, um, put velcro on them and hooks, and they make our cute little blinds, which are on their own 
do block out a bit of light as well but it also keeps it warmer in the winter as well all of our removable blinds as well are kept up in these cupboards up out the way we've also got obviously a few safety features in here like you'd have in your normal house so we've made sure we've installed an optical smoke alarm which is great for things like caravans and motor homes we've got two fire extinguishers within the cab itself a fire blanket carbon monoxide alarm and in the back where we've got all of our batteries and stuff we've also got another fire extinguisher just in case hopefully we'll never need them but we wanted to make sure we included them so just as we make our way outside flooring so we use outro flooring so this is used like the world over in really high traffic areas it's fully waterproof we put it underneath everything as an extra layer of insulation underneath that we have a skin of plywood 18 mil 25 mil um Celotex, and 18 mil sub floor underneath that so we've got a really chunky floor underneath here and it should outlive us in terms of wear and tear this was a labor of love actually in the back in our garage area we have a full-on off-grid electric system that we built ourselves from scratch in here we've got our MPPT controller, our battery to battery controller, our 1600 watt Victron inverter, our Lynx distributor system, our consumer unit for our shore power in, which distributes our 230 volt electric safely around the bus. And we've even put these things on the end for forced cooling. So in really hot weather, we've got air being sucked in from the bottom and pushed out through the top. So we can make sure all of this is kept nice and cool as we're traveling along. We've taken time to think about the storage that we've got here too. So we've got things like our water hose and our ax and our spade and all of that stuff neatly stashed away in the back here. This is a boat hatch and it allows us to access the underslung water tank and various other things in here for maintenance, but mainly to clean out the tank. We had a custom one made that sits between the chassis rails underneath the van. It holds 184 liters and is heated to keep off those milder winter chills. We also have a grey water tank here. It's 60 litres, underslung, and has that remote dump valve that we showed you earlier in the video. And we've used the space either side of the fresh water tank to hold a 40 litre LPG tank on the right and an underslung diesel heater on the left. We also have an outdoor shower attachment built into this cabinet. It's dead easy to set up. You just plug it in, Away you go, and it's hot and cold. You've just got to be careful when you disconnect it. <laughs> in here, we've got our shore flow pump. Also includes our accumulator, our water cutoff valves. So if we're maintaining or we need to drain the system down and our valves for our LPG, we can shut off both pipes here. And we also have cutoff valves in behind the appliances themselves. Above here, we've got storage for our tools and other things like our battery charger. So we've got plenty of storage in here. A big part of our electrical system obviously relies on our roof rack. We built it ourselves from scratch. So we started with off the shelf roof bars that were off of a Ford Transit, and then used lightweight aluminium to frame three huge solar panels on the roof. And we've got a total of 960 watts. We've got lights on the roof as well, so we can light up any campground or parking spot like a Christmas tree. And the final thing that we have up there is our 5G antenna. And then that links back down to where we've got our router in here. This is motorhome Wi-Fi router. When the signal is like super duper duper, we've had it up to over 750 megabytes down, which is phenomenal. And then anything from about 10 to 30 up, which again is absolutely ideal, especially for uploading videos like this. So that brings us to the end of our van tour. And if you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe and give us a like. Hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching. One, two, three. Bye. Bye.